I want to thank everyone for joining us here at our, I guess this is our officially our fourth step up since we rebooted the program. Um, I'm Scott Bronick from Bremer Prosthetics of Saginaw. This is Nate Capa from Bremer Prosthetics of Flint. And we are here to talk to you about uh, prosthetics. Um, we're going to do some interactive stuff. We have some people joining us online today, which is exciting. And we want to do some question and answer for the first hour, and then we're going to do some exercises. So um, one of the things that we like to do when we start out is we like to go around the room. We like to have everyone introduce themselves. If you'd say whether you're above the knee, below the knee amputee, or partial foot amputee, um, how long you've been an amputee, what happened, what that experience has been like. Um, that we could kind of go on to if anyone's online, uh, having them share their experience, and then uh, we'll kind of get into some of the question and answer and group talk stuff, okay? So um, why don't we start on... I think she had the mic right over there. Oh, go ahead, Brianna. Brianna. Brianna's going to go around and lead us. Yeah, so. all right. Here okay. you go. Hi, um, my name's Irvin. I'm a right below the knee amputee since uh, 2018. Um, and I have been on my prosthetic for, I don't know, maybe about uh, since I guess into 2019. I'm doing pretty well with it right now, so. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. Hi, my name is Dave Randall, and I've got a prosthetic leg on, uh, amputation below the knee, and uh, working along with it, trying to get along. How long you been an amputee? Uh, since August of last year. So not quite a year. Right. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, Ben. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ben Barefoot. I've been an amputee since September 2016. Back in 2014, and I was ran over by a semi while riding a bicycle. We tried to repair the leg and just didn't quite turn out that well. But doing well now. You're amazing. Um, my name is Ray. I've been an amputee for, it'll be 17 years, June 18th of this year. Um, I lost, I'm above the knee uh, amputee. Been doing great. Um, since I came to Bremer Prosthetics, it's been an amazing journey for me. I sometimes don't see the accomplishments that I've made, but with the team that I have be being with them, it's just amazing. And um, I look forward to moving forward. My name is Jennifer. I was in a work-related accident just about a year ago, and I had a partial foot amputation in August. I'm still working on getting my prosthetic. Nate's been doing an awesome job, and I agree. My first prosthetic wasn't even close to what Nate's done for me in, in the few months that I've been dealing with Bremer Prosthetics. My name's Angie Church. I was in a motorcycle accident in August of 16. I'm an above-the-knee amputee. But I didn't get a socket that fit me well until November from Nate. I was at um, other places before and it wasn't working out well. But I just got this one Friday because I had surgery in March. So I may not walk as well as I was beginning to do. So. Yeah, I will. I yep, like back on the process, right? Yeah. Good. Hi, I'm Ed Radle. I am above the knee amputee for about se almost seven years now, worked with my prosthetic for about six and a half, and I started out with Bremer right away, and they came to me and, and have been working very well. It's getting, getting me really around very good. Thanks. My name is Michelle. I would like to say that I lost my leg in a romantic motorcycle accident, but mine's because of diabetes that I left untreated for many years. I am a left leg above knee amputation. I had my leg removed in February. So I'm very new to my prosthetic, but without Nate and Abby, I wouldn't know what to do. Okay, great. Oh. I'm Casey Quinlan. I'm a prosthetic technician at the Saginaw office. I'm a below knee amputee. I was in an industrial accident. Tomorrow will be 13 years since I got ran over, so that's me. I'm Chris. Um, above knee amputee um, since 1986 uh, this month exactly um, 35 years um, I'm a certified prosthetic assistant I'm Scott's assistant um, I do technical work I um, 
seeing a lot of patients now. Ed's my patient. Ben's my patient. Um, and they all seem to do well. I'm Lynn Bauer. I'm above the knee for like nine years now. So we want to welcome everybody that's here on, with us online today. Um, hey, if we could kind of cycle through. And Brianna, if you could maybe prompt them um, so that they know when it's their turn to turn their mic off. We will have you turn your mic off. Um, say hello. If, if you don't want to say hello, that's fine also. Um, but we'd love to have you kind of, kind of join into our conversation. We don't want to scare anyone away. Right. But we want to, everyone to feel included. So feel free to participate as you're comfortable. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Hi. How are y'all doing? We're doing great. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I'm Jennifer Eason, and I'm from Arkansas, and um, I'm a below-the-knee amputee, and uh, it's been three years. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. And then how about uh -huh. you, Scott? Do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Scott Love. I'm a right-sided, above-the-knee amputee. I'm a college professor at the University of St. Augustine for Health Sciences in St. Augustine, Florida. I'm a physical therapist. Um, I work with Bremer Prosthetics in Jacksonville, Florida, and stumbled across your website um, when I was scrolling on Facebook as I thought it was their account. I'm really trying to learn exercises and the programs that I've watched you guys do to try to teach my students. I teach the prosthetics courses, the three different DPT programs, and there's a big um, deficit in what physical therapist students need to know, and also a big deficit on having prosthetists and physical therapists working together to get the best results for amputees. Thank you. So Scott, we'd love to kind of circle back with you after this too, maybe over the next couple of weeks to kind of coordinate and help you with resources. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Um, I really need to get my students up to date on what's going on out there because as being an amputee for 10 years, I know that I've struggled through rehab and I'm a rehab specialist. So, you know, I can only imagine the people that don't have the connections that I do. I guess I'll sum it up. And one thing that I always say, amputees are less than 1% of the population. So there's just not as many above the knee and below the knee amputees to work with as there are rotator cuff injuries and other things like that. And I um, actually speak, and I know Nate speaks, we do a lot of things with education and at universities, physical therapy assistance, but from what I understand, those classes, they have two days where they focus on orthotics and prosthetics, and that's combined. That's not even just prosthetics. So um, I don't know that there's necessarily a lot going on, but we have just a lot of years in prosthetics and a lot of the stuff that we, we've been fortunate to collaborate with some really good physical therapists over the years right. who've shared some of their techniques with us. And of course, we're bouncing ideas off of them. And, and this, this program has really evolved over, over a couple of decades to, you know, to get to where it is. But the purpose, and I'm glad that you're joining us and you're looking for resources, one of the main reasons other than getting everyone together in a group like this and doing the exercises and the peer mentoring that we do is we would love therapists who want to see what we're doing, work more with us, uh, learn from that. I mean, you mentioned that you're in Florida. I do want to emphasize we are not Bremer Prosthetics that's in Florida like you, <laughs> right. you did say. Right. But Funny, we were down there to do a triathlon this year. We right. see, we saw Bremer Prosthetics. In Daytona. In right. Daytona, yeah. So, but, <laughs> but no, that is not us. But to, to get back to the point, we'd love to help someone in another state you know, be able to build off of, because we don't think that there's enough of this out there. We wish there was a big movement. We were saying, we're, I mean, we're kind of on an island ourselves just trying to find way. This virtual thing came about because of the pandemic and we used to do our groups together and we thought, you know, when we could, we saw a lot of people were going online looking for physical therapy because they didn't have people coming to the house trying to find, get different resources. And we thought, well, if there's a need and a demand for that, then we'll just try it. And that's really all we've been doing for the last four months. But an opportunity to share resources and collaborate together. Um, yeah, like Nate said, we're, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. It sounds like a great opportunity. Yeah, just one last point. We're very blessed. We just started about a year ago. We have a full semester of orthotics and prosthetics, um, which is very, very seldom in the United States. So I really want my students to come out. I, although it is like a niche um, physical therapy style because prosthetics aren't that much, 
I want my students to know. The right. nation needs experts, Scott. Yeah, no. It, and it sounds like you're up there ready to, right. to, to train experts. So that's fantastic. A full semester. That's great. No, but I mean, you spearheaded that, correct? Right. That's yeah. yeah, see, and yeah. it's like, you know, I'm an amputee myself, and it, it, it takes people who are in this field or just have that, like I said, we're less than 1% of the population. And I, I repeat that because it takes a while for people to understand what a small minority that is. And they really need more people to do what you've done to help to spearhead these types of things. Because, yeah, I think what, what you said is incredible. And I've never heard, we've had therapists that we've worked with that said, we wish we would have had more training. Right. They would have loved the idea. Right. Unfortunately, we see too often you get physical therapists who are relatively young and they want to help and they really don't know what to do. I mean, or they've only been taught to teach people at a functional level, which means walking with a walker and they don't get a chance to do core and a lot of the other stuff that we try to do. When we started this program, it was working with physical therapists and try to get people to go back for more physical therapy when, the, you know, when they were qualified. Because a lot of times you just tell people they're done with rehab and they think that means they're done. They don't realize they can go back for more therapy in another year and that you're never really done. I mean, that's, that's the truth. Um, it's something that we all work on, right? I mean, we try, had conversations down here earlier. Everyone, you heard people were less than a year post-op to people who are, how many is it? 33, you said? 35. 30, 34, oh, 34 years post-op. So, but it, do we ever quit learning? Or we always have to work on it. I mean, if we're not working, then we're sliding backwards because the wear and tear on our sound limbs and, and that type of thing. So I don't want to take up too much time in the segment talking about that, but I'm really glad you joined us, Scott, and we look forward to talking to you throughout the program and even afterwards. And thanks for what you're doing, physical therapy. Yeah, thank you so much, Scott. I'm excited that you can be here. And now, Tony, if you want to share a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Tony Ward. I'm from, live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a right above the knee amputee for approximately a year and a half, and it's from sepsis. And how's that journey been for you? Oh, long. <laughs> Very no. long. Um, <laughs> I'm a nurse practitioner, emergency room nurse practitioner by trade. So just to go from, you know, being extremely active to life coming to a standstill has been difficult. But, you know, I'm, I'm better. I'm better. Every day well, is good. better. You know, we have a saying, one of the things Nate and I work on, and we, we work and talk about prosthetics all the time, but when we started the program, we thought consistency in language was really important. And one of the things that we coined, um, kind of like you heard me say earlier, amputees are less than 1% of the population. We continue to say that because we want that to resonate. But the other thing is we say it takes two years, at least two years to maximize what you can do on a prosthetic limb. And I know, and that's why I asked when you said a year and a half, I'm like, well, you're still in that two year window. And it, it definitely seems long when you're in it, but your growth, I mean, you're, as far as your road to recovery, that second year is really where you learn a lot more about reacting to your environment and not so much, you know, when you take a step looking down to make sure that your foot's underneath you. So do you find that you're maybe more in that transition process where things are starting to get a little bit easier and you're reacting a little quicker and not having to spend as much time, you know, focusing on some of the smaller things or? Yes, 100%. And I'm to the point um, where I forget my cane often. <laughs> so. Yeah, yep, that's a big one. When we say to people, it takes two years to maximize what you can do on a prosthetic limb. And if you agree with that, you know, it, it's nice for people to hear things like you're, instead of you feeling like you're on an island, we, it's reassuring to hear, oh, that's normal. And a lot of times in the groups, what we always get, it's nice to have people at different stages of their recovery process interacting with one another and saying, I remember I went through that. And, you know, even though, we're prosthetists and we're talking to people all the time for them to hear it from someone else besides us and besides their physical therapists or their doctors. They've always told us that's very reassuring too. So that's just another thing that we're trying to share here. So, all right. Well, thank you for sharing your mm -hmm. story with us. Thank you very much. This is exciting. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, my name is Walid. I'm from Manchester, England in the UK. And I stumbled across this meeting on Facebook um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to meet people and make friends with people who were going through similar experiences as myself. Um, I noticed everyone here is a upper knee or below knee amputee, 
I'm actually a right arm above the elbow amputee and um, I lost my arm in December last year so it's all quite new to me. So Waleed, have you done anything to, to get a prosthesis yet? Is that an option for you? Is it something you've looked into? I've spoken to, a, to the prosthesis team in the hospital, but um, in the UK it works a little differently. We have the NHS right. over here and it could be quite slow in getting the ball rolling. So I've been, I've been to the casting and measure and the second fitting for my prosthetic. And what we really decided to go down is we're going to first try a cosmetic prosthetic just to get used to wearing something and get used to the weight. And then from there, maybe move on to something more functional. Absolutely. Uh, best of luck to you. And I mean, we do, a, we do have a group here. This, when, we, when we do our exercises, they are targeted towards learning to walk. Um, but as prosthetic specialists, we also do upper extremity. So don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask us, you know, maybe more targeted questions, yeah. you know, for what, what you would need along the way. Okay. Nate's excellent with upper extremity prosthetic limbs. So please, yeah, ask if, even though we may not be talking directly mm -hmm. about upper extremity, um, please feel free. Any questions that you might be wondering about no, what to expect during that journey. Um, and then I, we can even find a way to maybe uh, talk with you or interact with you at another time um, if you haven't had a lot of that and you still have questions, okay? Mm -hmm. On our website and on our YouTube, we do have uh, one of our patient, we, we filmed one of our patient's appointments, his name's Jesse, and it was really cool. We, we got to watch Nate deliver him a new upper extremity prosthesis, and Jesse was kind of talking about what his experience was like with old ones versus his experience with what it could be with this new one that Nate delivered. So it, it's pretty cool to watch that uh, appointment too. If you're interested in watching that, I can send you uh, the YouTube link. Hi, thank Wait, you for right? helping me get back on. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm excited so excited y'all should have seen me trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> well, you're getting me excited, right? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Right, kind of I got energy. cataracts on both eyes. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. I'm so happy to be a part of this. So, tell me a little bit about um, your experience so far. Okay, I am a above the knee amputee, and um, I am so also the um, CEO of the Armstrong Warriors and Disability Network. My name is Jeanette Benson. Okay. Um, right now for the last six months, I haven't been able to have physical therapy, but I know that the step up means you have to have your leg on. Am I correct? Well, we have adaptations for a lot of our exercises that don't need a prosthesis. So some of the things we'll do today, you do need to have a prosthesis and some you don't. Yeah. I'm willing to learn everything because I'm trying to learn how to do exercise so that when I have my support group, I can show them how to do it. If I know how to do well, it, then and, I can throw other people. I'm actually glad you brought that up because last week, you know, we, the virtual thing is new to us, as I mentioned earlier. So, um, you know, we're trying to adapt on the fly, which we're pretty good at, but, right. you know, we learn as we go. So we started doing this virtual part uh, in the interactive part at the beginning where originally it was planned at the end because we felt like people might have saw us doing some exercises and they didn't have a prosthesis so they couldn't participate. So this gives us an opportunity to say, you may see us doing some exercises that you can't do without a prosthesis, but a lot of them we're going to try to give adaptive versions. So if you stick with it through to the end during the exercise portion, we're going to try to give you doses of everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, and I actually didn't even think to mention that, but right. you asking the question. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But this too gives you an opportunity during the first hour to kind of talk with the group and see what we're all about. And I think that helps people stay mm -hmm. tuned a little bit longer as well. Well, I'm very happy that I found y'all. I actually was, I've been doing my research because I'm new to trying to have a support group. And um, mm -hmm. the thing is, I was going through such a severe depression behind finding out that I had been wronged by my vascular doctor. So I started going to support groups, but they didn't have one here in Battle Creek. That's what made me create one. But at the same time, you know, it's hard to get people to participate. It really is. Right. You know, and, and, you know, we mentioned we have a lot of history right. with these things. Nate and I, before we even worked together, we had a history working with, you know, support groups. Unfortunately, we find that sometimes, in, 
this isn't to discourage you at all, but there could be a stigma. You know, you try to get people involved and they say, well, I'm not depressed. Maybe you've heard that stuff already. And then I started doing. This is why, I, this is what I feel. Uh, as being an amputee, there is a mental health issue going on, trust me. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. There is. And a lot of it, and the, and the value of it, it, you know, for me to share some of my experience, like we had mentioned to Scott, I mean, anyone who wants to help advocate for it, people aren't going to come along and do it for us. We've got to do it ourselves. Um, but, but, you know, the, right. that le being less than the 1%, and getting all that same inconsistency in languages and things. So if you hear us saying things like we're less than 1%, it takes two years to maximize what you can do on a process. The purpose of what you're trying to do is share information. And we used to do it with sports afterwards. And then they'd say, well, I'm not an athlete. This program kind of evolved really through all the different things where, and Nate and I would always joke and say, as much as we think that people like <laughs> to come for our exercises, <laughs> it's really the peer mentoring, the power of getting the group together right. so people don't feel like they're on an island and sharing I mean, let's, let's be honest. Anyone who's done this long enough, raise your hand if you agree with me. We adapt to a lot of different things. We do the stuff that we used to do before, but we don't do it the same, correct? And it doesn't mean I don't do it as well, but it, I, I certainly just, don't do it the same. It's constantly adapting to the needs of the people that are, that are coming. So making sure that, that the group is all engaged and that everybody's having a good experience and that they, uh, everyone wants to come back for next time. So keep it up, and if we can be a resource for you, please feel free to, to utilize us. Well, and did you say where you're from? Jeanette? I'm from, I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm in Battle Creek, Michigan. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah I don't know how far I am. I thought I was going to be able to have a ride today, but then it started raining and no one showed up. So I say I can go on the Zoom. I and was going to surprise nice you guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> I love your energy. You surprise me next time. <laughs> right. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm looking forward to it. All right. All right. And now, Ashley, uh, Ashley or Marianne, if either of you want to unmute yourselves and start talking, go for it. Okay. <laughs> it's Marianne. This is the first time I've joined in. I had a below knee amputation back in December. And then I fell and had to have other surgery of, and a pick line and the whole thing. So I got my prosthetic maybe five weeks ago. So I'm, I'm walking around fairly well, still going to physical therapy. Um, but I kind of, um, I live in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and this I had to get away, you know, being inside a house for five months, more or less. Um, I, my one son drove me to where my son is stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. So I am here for the week just to have um, time to reflect and um, be around positivity instead of negativity. Well, very good. And I, I know travel and being able to kind of get out of your regular routine is a good way mm -hmm. to kind of break things up and make things not feel so monotonous. And sometimes yeah. that's a big step too, when you have such a big change in your life to be able to yeah. kind of get out of that shell and say, okay, I'm going to go someplace new. I'm going to try a new challenge. So, yeah. no, so that's huge. That's really what I want to say. I mean, you know, getting out of the house when we first lose a leg, that's scary the first time we do that. It's less scary the second time we do it, but so many times people get in a pattern where they don't even get out of the home. And I think the best, you know, you're six weeks into the process, so I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of the inconsist inconsistencies of the fit, that type of thing. And I just want to reassure you that's normal. And through time, those things will become more consistent. Um, and you're probably having some good experiences in there too. But the best thing that you're doing is the fact that you're brave enough to get out of your home and to do some different stuff because what that's going to lend to okay, I did that, now I can do this and more and more so that you don't isolate yourself and kind of, it sounds like you're trying to live your life and you're doing, th th really a lot of this is it takes, I would say it's 60% it's mental and 40% physical. And that is, if strong enough, you're, if you're strong enough mentally to keep with it, the physical part will come. Right. But being able to face the challenges and keep going, that's really right. a large part of the battle. I'm just keep on moving along, even in baby steps. But for the most part, I can walk around the house with no assistance. And, but I still take a cane if I go out somewhere. Well, keep, keep it up. Keep, 
Yeah, the one lady mentioned that she forgets her cane, right. and that's eventually how. Right. They, and those those are positive signs when that right. happens. That's mm-hmm. a that's a natural way to transition into just living life without an assistive device, even. Okay, and then Ashley, it looks like you're last. If you want to introduce yourself. Hey, um, I'm Ashley. I'm from South Georgia. Um, I actually stumbled upon you guys um, from a TikTok video that I saw last night, actually. Um, I've been looking for resources, trying to um, get more information, um, and I'm learning, actually, how to walk better every day. I'm actually in physical therapy. I've been an amputee for approximately a year now. Um, I was unable to emulate actually for a very long time before I had my amputation. I had a, this is, a, this is going to sound nuts. I had a bunion removal in May of 2020 and it went south. It went very wrong and I was unable to walk for over a year. We fought to save my leg and I ended up having to have a um, amputation And since then, it has been a battle to get me up and walking. Um, It's been a lot of trial and error. And I had a nerve death. And so getting me up and on my feet has been a problem because I still have no sensation or feeling in my residual limb. Um, So it's it's been a lot of work. Um, I still continue to have falls. several times a week so I can relate to what one of the other young ladies said about hiding in the house (laughs) because it it is a mental battle um getting up and getting out there um because you get discouraged a lot when you can't get up um but it takes a village so (laughs) you want to you want to get up and go because I have two small children and they keep me going, but we're getting there. <laughs> you know, ha- having a family that, that that keeps you going, that's a big thing. So that's, that's at least, you know, there's something positive to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in terms of, you know, in terms of the nerve damage, obviously that adds a lot of extra complication, right? So there, there's, there's a lot that I'm sure your prosthetists and therapists and everything are doing, doing everything they can to, to help you get over this and, and help get things going. Um, in terms of the strength, I mean, I'll kind of, you know, you have your, your stuff that you talk about, about, you know, periods of inactivity and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that is what, how long have you been wearing a prosthesis now? After um, my amputation, um, I had my amputation in April of 21, and I wasn't able to get my prosthetic um, I was able to start getting up with my prosthetic in October of last year, um, at the end of October. And I was able to start getting up then, but, um, we had to add upper hardware in order for me to be able to actually actively stand because we didn't realize at that time, um, that the problem was, um, from all the nerve death. So, Um, I've been actively getting up, I would say in the last probably three to four months, I've been able to hold myself up better, um, due to the upper hardware that they added, but it's made my prosthetic tons heavier. So we're trying to, we're actually fighting insurance right now to get me a different prosthetic. Um, that's Mm going to be more lightweight for me. Um, because of the hardware that I've had to add on in addition, um, because I've not been able to build any muscle structure at all in my residual limb because of the issue, the nerve damage and nerve death. It's, I have a little bit of a unique situation. (laughs) So it's a little different because I was immobile for so long. I also lost um, the, um, muscle structure and muscle tone in my spine so it's it's kind of an uphill battle either way you look at it yeah. and, and it is yeah. a- Ashley I want to give you so, some hope I mean I, I do work with someone who is 
completely paralyzed on, on one half of his body where he also uses a prosthesis. And he, he does walk. After a long recovery, after something, there is potential. You aren't the only person that's in, in s with, with circumstances like this. And there, there is success still there for you. It, it's, it's a harder road, though, for sure. No, it, yeah, we say in that under, we're saying that understanding how great your challenges right. are. Absolutely. But to still, you know, because I was, I was going to talk a little bit about the strength training and trying to rely on that. But you mentioned you're not able to regenerate muscle tissue because of the nerve damage? So, well, so far we've, um, we've not had um, a lot of luck. They actually spoke okay. with me today about that. Um, we're trying deep tissue electrostim. Um, so uh -huh. I'm, I'm really hoping that there'll be success with that um, because I'm not yep. giving up. Um, no, keep, I, keep trying. Yeah, I don't believe, well, you know and giving up. Sorry. I don't think that that's, um, in the cards for me. Um, I don't want to give up. <laughs> I have yeah. too much, you know, ahead of me. Yep. And you, cause you had mentioned you, you would, Oh, Hey cat. <laughs> you had mentioned that your event activity prior to the amputation. And then it sounds like you had at least six months since the amputation. I mean, that's a key thing. And I think you understand your circumstances that you're struggling with there, even before you started with the prosthesis and compounded with the nerve damage. But yeah, since you're just starting to get to a point where you can get up and do some of those things now, um, hopefully you find some success and something to build on there. Yeah. I mean, you have to stay strong in here and in your heart. I mean, it's mind over matter. You can't, you can't stop. I mean, you have to... You, you, stay strong either way all the way around and you have to have a good um team of cheerleaders i mean yeah. you you have to have a good team either way i mean i never realized the amount of amputees there were out there so i think that this program that you guys have to offer is amazing i actually contacted the prosthetic clinic and sent them your link to let them know so maybe other patients could um get involved in this because i think you know, the more people you have to reach out to and bond with, yeah. the better off you'll be. Yeah. But where, who, who's the, what clinic do you work with? Um, it's Florida O&P in Jacksonville, okay. Florida. Okay. okay. You had said something, and I guess I'm just going to kind of elaborate on that a little bit because you have, you know, when you go through something traumatic, like we go through for whatever reason, be it diabetes, motorcycle accident, you had mentioned that it's not as glamorous as it's all traumatic. You know, it's, it may not be, you had died, but you know, we always believe this is something that happens to other people, but this isn't going to happen to us. And then you find positivity in strange ways. Mm -hmm. Like you're trying to do it sometimes, people, but I'm like, I remember seeing that car coming at me I was in a motorcycle accident and thinking that I was going to die. And then after something like that, you say, well, I'm going to try to take my three good limbs and move on because that's all we can do. You know, if you have that, if you have that warrior spirit, that fighting spirit, I'm going to, you're just, you know, you, you got knocked down, but I'm going to find a way to get back up. So, I mean, that's, and I mentioned the mind earlier and that's going to be your most powerful. I've had people come up to me because I wear running legs when I'm training for triathlons and stuff. And they say, does that give you an athletic advantage? And I'm, and the one time I looked at a lady, I said, the only athletic advantage I get from anything is up here. <laughs> Because people don't realize I'm running in the middle of my tibia and, you know, we see all these commercials with amputees running on the television and doing Olympics and stuff. And people think, oh, technology. There's no technology that allows any one person to do that because if, if you're an active amputee, we're enduring a certain amount of pain to live our life and do the things that we do. I always say I'd love to see the commercial where they take their leg off and say, here's the sores on my limb and this is what the price that I pay to run the race that I run. That commercial hasn't come out yet, but <laughs> we're, we're working on education of yeah, the people that yeah, are making those yeah. commercials. Though. But it, but it's the true <laughs> are, it's the true are. story. Is there anyone here who doesn't get sores on their limb? We don't talk about it. You know, it really makes me mad when I'm arguing with insurance companies about things for my patients because what they don't understand is no one who's in our position. We don't want to feel victimized. We're, we spend our life where we lost a leg and no matter how active we get again, that we all know from that time, looking at our limb the first time in the hospital was a difficult thing to do, looking down and seeing that limb gone, wasn't it? And all we've been trying to do from that moment forward is blend back in. So when the insurance company says, oh, well, you don't need this because you're too active and you're too active, it's almost like they're breaking you down and trying to make you feel like, what do I have to tell you? you know, and it's just, it, it's a weird cycle, but 
you know, that's, uh, I, I think you have the right idea and the right spirit, and that's, that's the thing that hopefully you'll find some solutions on your journey, and please keep in communication with us. Oh, I definitely will. Um, I have a nursing background. I, I went to um, college when I was still in high school, so I earned my nursing degree very early on, and I spent, you know, many, many days at the bedside with patients, and you learn to be an advocate and a cheerleader for those that are down, and so it, it broke me for a while. I went into a deep, deep, dark depression because I walked in the hospital that day thinking I'm just getting a bunion removed. This is going to be a cinch. Uh, you know, I'm going to go back to work on Monday, <laughs> you know, roll right. my little knee scooter around. And when I realized, you know, it's paralyzed, my, my leg doesn't work. What, what's going on here? I never imagined get, from getting a bunion repair to a leg amputation. I mean, that's unheard of, but everybody's situation is unique. Everybody's situation is traumatic for them. But mm -hmm. you also have to realize that there's always somebody that's worse off than you are. And you have to get together, pick each other up and keep going. You know, you said, yeah, you said something else I'd say because I worked with other disability networks where I work quadriplegics and paraplegics and you can see other people and then you just kind of don't feel like you have it. Yeah, I mean, I think you have a great mindset. So, you know, thanks for sharing your story and we're all behind you. So we hope you, mm -hmm. you make it where you need to be. I will. All right, great. Great. So is there anyone else? Okay. Yes, yeah, family joined us too. So. What, what am I doing here? <laughs> you just say who you are and why oh, you're hi. here and know how long you've been an amputee. You know the regular. <laughs> okay. The routine. <laughs> Favorite song? I, I, I'm Dave Laddie. I've been an amputee for over five years now. Uh, lost my leg to uh, cancer or, and uh, been coming here ever since. I got set up with Scott right before I went in for my amputation and been with these guys ever since. Yeah. I do all right? Yeah, you did all right. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. <laughs> I'm Stan Murdoch. Uh, I had both legs amputated about three years ago uh, and was not in an area where I got really great prosthetics service till I moved down here six months ago and met that man and uh it's been amazing what i've been able to do since then with a little bit of mechanical help and and some uh enthusiasm uh i just spent two days kayaking so <laughs> with some folks that do adaptive kayaking for anyone that's interested uh, I'll have, I have their information, and they they have boats, they have adaptive equipment, they have those missing upper limb equipment to paddle the boat. Uh, amazing folks. There are a, a lot of kayak launches in, well, what they say, you're in 15 minutes of water if you're in Michigan, <laughs> uh, and kayaking is very low impact. Uh, it's very easy to get into, and it really felt great to be out a couple of days this week well, that was, paddling around. That was a big deal. That's how we talked about. Yeah. But I'm going to say, you already had everything it took to be successful on the legs. I just made them right. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything that wasn't out of the ordinary, so you get the credit for that. Robin Souza. Um, I have been an amputee for seven and a half years, and unlike a lot of people here, that it was actually my choice. I was in a, a car accident in 98 and lived 17, almost 18 years in pain, and I went to a new doctor, and I said, cut it off. <laughs> so we, no nerves, nothing. Three weeks later, we went in, cut it off, and I took my life back. I'm more able-bodied now than when I was with a foot. So. 
Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. It's yeah. We have a great group here today. I was going to um, say, we, the introduction is, part went a lot longer than it normally goes because right. we have so many people, which right. is great because that means our group is growing. We do want to say something quick to Jennifer. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. C go for it. Okay. Right. Jennifer, <laughs> are you there? Last time we were here, we talked about getting you a foot for a water leg, and we do have yes. uh, something. I expected it here already, but I was told from Casey that it's going to be here on Friday. So we should be shipping it out to you on Monday. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 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 So, so grateful. Well, I, I hope that you'll be able to have the rest of the components to put that stuff mm -hmm. together and get, get back in the water like we talked about. So, But I did want to, yeah. I know Brianna has been in communication about that with you and I wanted to let you know. I was hoping to have it already, but it, it will be here on Friday. So... Thank you so much, guys. Yep, just yeah, the, absolutely. Yep, our pleasure. So um, did you have a question you might want to ask since you have the group? Are you talking to me? Yeah. I okay, yeah. Problem, I actually <laughs> had, I had, I had a question about um, getting in and out of the water, but I, I just was looking at your leg as I was sitting here watching you speak. Your leg? leg, yes, it looks like a real leg it doesn't even I, like i was sitting here going because mine you see the metal part and yours you can't see that yeah. i like right. that <laughs> the, the guy come on over here the, the guy that just said thank you is the guy that makes my cover <laughs> that's casey I Ka love that. casey's my technician believe it or not he was my patient for for a few years before he even worked for me so but and i will say amazing. well thank you because you know, before I worked at Bremer Prosthetics, I had protective covers that would protect my leg in the event that if my kids would fall down, you know, when they hit these components, they're hard, they damage clothes. Yeah. I, I didn't wear anything that looked like a leg because, well, the companies that I worked before I owned this was an owner. I worked for other people like you do. And they just honestly, it looked so bad that it was, and now you see a lot of people, they don't, they choose not to get them because if they look that bad, why bother? You know, it's something that insur yeah. insurance companies don't pay well for it, but I mean, it's, when I started with the Bremer prosthetics team, they always felt like making a leg look like your leg, if that, you know, it's not important to everyone, but if it is, then it's important the, to us. Then and it I, should be done the right way yeah. and done, you know, with the same attention to detail as the fit of your prosthesis is done. I mean, what I had heard for 20, well, not quite 20 years, 15 years before I started working at Bremer prosthetics, you know, and because you got to keep in mind, I was a patient first. That's not important. Function's the only important. And I remember one time I got really mad at my prosthetist because I was working at the company. I was like, you know, last I checked on performance, like cur Corvettes, they perform really well too. And man, do they look cool. Why can't, <laughs> why shouldn't these, considering that they're taking the places of our legs? I mean, if there's pride in engineering, you make something that functions well and you make it look as nice as it can look too. Right. So, um, so thank you for that. But I'll tell you a little joke. One of the things I always like to do I love it when people, you know, they see the knee brace and they don't think somebody's missing a leg. And my wife kind of laughs at me too because she'll go, sometimes we'll be out and if I got shorts on, somebody will come up to me and they go, what's wrong with your knee? And of course, nothing's wrong with my, so I go, nothing. And then I just turn around and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, why are you like that? I'm like, well, I don't want to talk about legs unless I'm getting paid for it. So. <laughs> or I'm running a free clinic like this right. one. <laughs> exactly. But, but, you know, people always have questions. I get it. But. I said, it's funny that you said that about your knee, because I'm sitting here with this knee brace on my good leg, right? And I was sitting here looking at your leg, and I'm like, well, he's got a knee brace on too. And then you just said <laughs> yeah. that about him. Yeah. But it is No, your, it's a suspension sleeve. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. love it. I really do yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoy the foot. Thank you very and much. So, and I think everyone knows we're going to take a break from the spring session because a lot of people, and we're thankful that they have vacations and other things to do in the summer. And I know you people are from all over the place, but in Michigan, we've got like three months of good, <laughs> three we months to take to enjoy advantage good of good weather. It, right. Yeah, so we encourage everyone <laughs> to take advantage of it. But when we reconvene in September for the fall session, you know, we want to hear about how your summer was and hopefully you got in the water and we're swimming and doing some of the things you were looking to do. We'll keep the Facebook page going and that type of stuff so there's still communication, so. We just won't be meeting like this until September, but everyone will be notified of the dates and what we're doing. So, right. 
So does anyone virtual uh, have a question hey. that they might like to ask? I do. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So the leg that I have, matter of fact, just one second. Yeah, the leg that I have, they, it's called, I guess, a C leg. Okay. It has okay. a battery to go in it. Yes. It has to go mm -hmm. on the charger. And, and like most people, I watched the video. And I thought I was going to put that on and just stand up and walk. I got mm -hmm. very discouraged. Mm -hmm. And I um, watched this young man that say amputee. And he was on the floor. He got up, balanced himself, put his leg on. He just kind of like put his nub in there and like stumped it down a couple of times. And it was on. The leg I got, I can't stand it. It's, it look, I, you know, kids are entertained when they see it because they think I'm a robot. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, that's cute. But like I kept telling them, I say, I want my leg to look as much as possible like a leg. Mm -hmm. Now here, I, I, I want. I don't know if you can see it, but you know what I mean when I say a C leg. We know what a C leg is. Yes. Yep. yep we know exactly what that is. Um, it's a very, it's a, it's a very good knee component. It's a very good knee component. So we're not going to say anything bad about a C leg. But what we want to talk to you about is that there, there is a lot of great technology when it comes to knees and feet. But if you don't have the socket, the socket is the part that goes up that you put your body inside of. If that part isn't formed and contoured to you exactly as, as intimately and as appropriately as possible, then we could, we could have insurance spend thousands and thousands of dollars all over the place buying technology, and you're not going to be able to use it. What, what, what you really need to make your prosthesis work is a socket that fits correctly. That is, no, that's, that is number one, and that's one through nine. By the time we get to 10, then okay, yep, the knee is important. And, and, and then you start to notice differences between the different knees and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But until you have that um, understanding of your prosthesis, the understanding of your body and how to operate the mm -hmm. prosthesis, those things, w we see it a lot. Technology gets a little bit oversold. It, sometimes sometimes it's, it's a little bit better to start with something more basic, learn how to do it, learn the ins and outs, and then after you feel confident, then start kind of introducing some of those things. Because and, and what Nate's saying is 100% right, and we could go on oh, for wow. a half hour on that alone. Yes. But I do want to hit on another thing that you said that I think was very important, and it goes back to um, when I was talking to Scott and, and, and I think you earlier about we're less than 1% of the population, and they're not being an understanding, and they're not being enough understanding in the medical community about what this rehab journey is like. And you said... I was getting this great knee, and I thought I was going to put that on, and I was off I go. Why did you think that way? See, you weren't properly prepared what to expect in your journey, and I'm not trying to be a negative person and saying, because when we talked about it, it takes two years to maximize what you can do on the prosthesis, you're just at the very beginning. You know, you've got a long time ahead, of, and you've got probably a I'm not going to knock that knee like Nate said, because most likely if you came to my clinic and I was working on you, we'd probably do a socket. I'm not even saying you need a mm -hmm. socket replacement, but we'd say, hey, we can work with these components. Let's focus on making a good socket and take it from here. So what really is lacking is the understanding. You heard me say that story about the running leg earlier. People say, oh, you've got an athletic advantage or technologies come really far. This technology does not walk itself. This is not bionics. This is about proper training. I think everyone here who works with us, it's about training on the prosthesis and understanding that this is going to take a while. You can rely on, there's a lot of good modes with your prosthesis, like stumble recovery, which will help prevent you from falling and things like that. But if going back to when we do our exercises, if you're not using the proper muscle groups that you need to propel that prosthesis properly, you know, a lot of times you see people walking, they're just using that prosthesis like a crutch. They're throwing it out with their hip, you know, flexors, they're throwing it down on the ground, they're not shifting their weight over to the prosthetic side, you've fallen two or three times, we go into a preservation mode, and this is what you see. But that's not walking. You know, and, 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 just, and I picked up on everything when you said, I thought I was going to put that on and go. Well, you weren't properly prepared. And that's where, if you're running a support group, and that's where I want people joining on this, on this online community and realizing that there are people out there who can help prepare people and discuss what it is, because Unfortunately, when we hear from doctors and therapists and everyone in the medical community, technology, they'll see somebody, you lost your leg. 
They don't know if this person's above the knee, below the knee, whether they have a four inch residual limb above the knee or they have a 10 inch residual limb above the knee or whether it's below the knee six inches or what the, and they go, oh, you lost your leg. Technology's come a long way. You're gonna do great. They have computerized knees. You don't have to worry. That doesn't mean anything. That right. doesn't mean anything. Right. You know, and I think anyone here, if anyone would like to elaborate on that, but we yes. hear it all the time. You lost your leg. Technology's come a long way, and there's just so much more to it than that. Jeanette, I'm Ray. I have a sea leg as well. I've had it for about a year, and trust me, when I heard you say the same thing, um, you thought you were just going to get up and walk, and ta-da. Well, I had that same thought 15 years ago when I first got my um, definitive leg. I thought I was just going to get up and walk without a cane, no therapy, no this, no that. I can do all it because they gave me a great leg. Well, honestly, that was the worst leg I ever had. The sea leg is very awesome, but you do have to take uh, time out for yourself, exercise, work with your uh, person that's helping you to understand how this leg works. I've only had it for a year, and I've made accomplishments. I'm walking better. My back doesn't hurt. I, I'm just amazed at how, because I don't like change. And believe me, I did not want this leg. But I said, okay, they know what they're talking about. And there's a lot of us in this group right now that have a C leg, and I see them doing wonderful. So don't give up. But like he said, take little steps at a time. Maybe you want to start on a lower leg that's not so fancy. I'm not sure what your needs are, but don't give up. But Thank you. But it is... It is the training. It's not the technology, and, and right. that's just Absolutely. so overlooked, unfortunately. So the, thir the third piece that I kind of heard you bring up was, was talking about how you didn't want one that looked like it was technology. You wanted something that looked like a leg, right? So no matter what, so Scott's leg, you, you, see, you can see Scott's leg right now. This is, this, is so this is soft foam that's covering up all that technology. Your sea leg can be covered by the same soft foam. The majority of the time that you see a cover like this, it's just, oh, it's just external to the stuff that you already have. So just because you have a sea leg does not mean that you can't have a protective cover. Um, we, we call it a protective cover with anatomical shaping because insurances hate the word cosmetic. Well, they won't pay so for it if you... They hate the word cosmetic, so we... But, but look, we want it to look cosmetic, right? We want it to be cosmetic, but we, we stay away from that term. But it has an anatomical shape, right? It's shaped like a leg. And, and that makes it more medically necessary in their eyes, the fact that we are doing as much so that we can to restore the appearance of, of the leg that was lost. That can be done on a sea leg. We do it all the time. Yes, okay. Okay, so I was going through hangers. That was my prosthetic people. I haven't been with them or seen them in months because I was having issues um, with the uh, residual leg. I have not even had my prosthetic on since. My question is, uh, since I got this C-leg, is it any, I, I don't, I haven't even had therapy in the last five, six months or anything. So my question is, if I was to come in to your company with my C leg, can I switch over from them to see if what I need, if you can help me? You can change who does, takes care of your, 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 who you see for your prosthetic needs is your choice. And that's not anyone else's choice, no matter what anyone tells you. It, your insurance company may have a say because if you have an HMO or something that says you have to go under someone who's in network. But other than that, you no, there's nothing that binds you to hanger. Um, you, that's your leg. Those components are paid for. And you take that stuff and you go wherever you want. And I mean, it sounds like, unfortunately, you've fallen through the cracks and what you need to do. Did you, uh, did you want to say something? Yeah. Also something I just learned that when Obamacare became a thing, there is no longer a pre-existing condition. Your insurance can't deny you and say, oh, well, that accident happened when you had different insurance. I'm not going to cover it. They can no longer do that. You, and can, that's change a big it. you thing. can change insurances. Yep. yep. And, and that, yep. And that and is they something still that still have to cover. Um, it. You know, yes. you, for, for those kinds of things, you, you know, to change insurances, you have to wait for what they call open enrollment periods. So there's a little bit but of, that exists. But, but there is, I mean, I there's always options. And for people that really kind of continue to seek things out, there are always options and uh, you can find ways to do it. I just want to add, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut anybody off. There's lots of people that want to add to your question and give you answers. Um, 
I didn't say about my socket. It does make a big difference in how your socket fits you and how you wear it and the material. Everything about your socket is the beginning if it fits you comfortable. Don't be afraid to tell them. Like, I'm not afraid to tell Abby, who has been working with me for what, two years now, I think, something like that, that I don't want the socket to come up on my butt cheek. I don't want that there. I don't want it in my groin area. I tell her just like I feel. I hold nothing back, and you have every right to be that person. Just tell them like it is. Just tell them. Don't be afraid. Just be, be yourself. And, and your process should encourage that. Thanks for you. you know, that, that, that kind of communication with whoever you're working with is, is, should be encouraged because that's, that's how the, your prosthesis becomes the best prosthesis for you is through lots of communication, lots of kind of talking about the good things, the bad things, all of that stuff. So that's a great point, Ray. Thank you. How, how far is Battle Creek from Lansing? I'm going to say may, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. I was going to say, that's what I thought, yeah. I how, know far, a place how far are you from Lansing? We have an office in we Lansing. We have an office in Lansing. East Lansing. Do you do meetups in there? Yes, we do. Yeah, we, we do meetups in there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Irvin. Just wanted to make sure that if any of us come into contact with anybody that we know that is going to be getting an amputation, let them know that ahead of time that they can choose who they go with because mm -hmm. that happened to me. I was in the hospital and I just woke up at Hurley and they were telling me, this is who's going to be doing your prosthetic. Nobody told me that I had a choice. And it mm -hmm. wasn't right. until later that I even found out that that was an option for me. Mm -hmm. And had I believe that I would have been along a lot further had I been with you all as opposed to who I started off with. Mm -hmm. Because what you'll find out is that there are prosthetic companies that are more of a family type atmosphere and they're more concerned with you as an individual about what you're concerned about mm -hmm. as opposed to like basically walking into Home Depot looking for a prosthesis. I mean, that's a good analogy. Actually, I haven't <laughs> used that one. Right. I have yeah. some, <laughs> and <laughs> I probably have some less one. polite things that right. I say from yeah. time to time. <laughs> but unfortunately, what we're seeing more and more because of changes in insurance is that, you know, the hospitals, they're responsible so, for so much of the cost of like what you might get for, um, you know, if someone was to come in and do a post-op consultation and give you post-operative dressings, shrinkers, things like that. So the mindset is, well, we'll just get somebody under a contract and they take care of all this stuff. And more and more, and I think you're responding because we brought up this thing about choice. People feel like, well, almost every hospital now has somebody that they work with, you know, and when, and that's where they feel like they have to get their prosthetic limb. And I, I mean, they've lived, I guess I say that adamantly because I, people are almost being made to feel like, and I know David, you were in this situation where you were told you have to go with a certain company that I won't say, and you had already met with me, right? And you said, no, I don't. And you didn't, but they, they don't stop. So it's important. Here's the main thing. No matter who you met with before, if you felt comfortable with that person and then the other, you know, you have the choice and you, you know, these things are long-term. They're so personal as far as we talk about two years to maximize what you can do on the prosthetic limb and all this other stuff. Your limb's going to be going through changes. You've got to have trust in the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, you know, feel free to talk to other people. And I've done, I've had people coming to see me for a consultation and they say, what do you think of this? And I look at their limb and the fit and I, you know, and if, if the answer is, hey, I think you need to just communicate a little bit better with your prosthetist because they've actually done some good work here. And unfortunately, we don't see enough of that in our industry. Mm -hmm. But we as amputees are like, you know, we have so many bad experiences. You have a couple of those and all of a sudden we don't feel like we have anyone to trust. And there's only so many places to go. Mm -hmm. So we're just very passionate about that because right. we work with our other colleagues who are trying to do the, you know, because it's, Man, people have two bad experiences and then they just think everyone who works in prosthetics is there and that they don't see the good things that they're right. trying to do. So really, you know, go by how you feel, your gut instincts. What is my relationship? Right. Did I trust this person? Did they seem like they were given, or, you know, if you feel like, and I know like David said, if you feel like you're being bullied into going somewhere and you don't feel comfortable with that, trust those instincts too. And you, you know, and if anyone has, Anyone who's going through something, they should be looking for ways to get a consultation before they have the surgery and that type of thing. So, yes, Jennifer. That was my situation. I live in a remote area. I had one choice for a prosthetic company, 
and how I found Bremer is, um, I believe it was you online. I literally was having a mental breakdown online trying to figure out what to do, and and she found me and. Thank God, because it's been a godsend since I've been here. Like you're strong-willed, and you're like, okay, I'm going to fight for my care. And I, you know, we've heard people say that there are people out there that they just trust with a doc. Right. You know, not you know right. that someone in the medical community says something, and they say, well, they must know more than I do. And I, that's why it's so important that we reinforce to people there really isn't a full understanding of what quality prosthetic care should be or you know if this is right do they look at the prosthesis and say you know why aren't you doing better they might see someone who's a bilateral amputee we had a patient and and he would been to two different companies he'd been to five different companies okay he'd been generous I, but no but, <laughs> but this, anyway. this is how sad it is he had been to five different companies <laughs> this man he's a bilateral amputee w one leg above the knee one one leg below the knee one leg above the knee he struggled to even put his legs on I mean, he couldn't do anything. I, I had to go to his doctor's appointment before the doctors, before, before we were together with the patient in the room, the doctor took me aside and said, I don't think this guy's real motivated. I want to kind of warn you about he's him. He's warning him. He's warning me the about the patient. The problem because he's been to five other places and every prosthetic interaction he had was a failure. And the doctor's a great doctor. Yeah, he, just doesn't doctor see, doesn't he just doesn't see the full picture. With, within, within two months, this guy is now driving himself around. He's shopping independently. He's, he's walking places instead of using his wheelchair. He's doing all those things. When we saw him in our clinic on Tuesday, and it's I mean, kind of like I said he, to Stanley, we'd done nothing extraordinary for this guy. Right. All we did was make him sockets that fit. We just, we just provided him the tools that he needed to do the things that he had the spirit to do already. Just so you know that I've been through, like, I think I want to say like five different prosthetic centers and um, doctors as well. And I've uh, fired them all, except for the new doctor that I've got that's on board. It's very important to have a doctor that's on the same page as your prosthetic uh, center or clinic, whichever you call it. It's very important. And I was just going to say that uh, Jesse, one of our patients, Jesse, he previously had gotten an upper extremity prosthesis, and he said it was so so hard to wear that he didn't even he didn't think he'd want a prosthesis so i was i just thought of you waleed and i wanted to let you know that you know there's experiences like that too for even upper extremity where right. a lot of people are so excited to finally get one and then they're like this is it um but you know they're it your fits out there your team matters we're gonna have to move on to the exercise portion of the group we definitely went over but like I said, we love. But we love the conversation. No, I mean, this I, I so wish great. I could. Stay, right. If I could sit here for four more hours and continue to talk to everyone, I would. Um, so what I'd like but, you to but do. But we also like to make people sweat a little bit. Well, so yeah, we there's do that, that other part of us. That <laughs> 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 but if you would get Brianna everyone's contact information and maybe you know at some point we might be able to follow up with you because mm -hmm. what I'd like is if anyone who's on the virtual part of this, if you have more questions for us, um, maybe a way that. Brianna will find, she's the technical person, her and Bill, I am not, <laughs> but she'll find a way that if you have any questions, um, she can come to me with your questions and I can try to get you some answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right into our exercise portion here without a break, um, without a break because we, we, did, we filled our break with awesome conversation. What we're going to do is we're going to do, do maybe like a quick five minute warm up here just so that our bodies are ready to move. Um, the, all, of these, all of these can be done whether you're sitting or standing. So anybody that's, that's comfortable to stand up, go ahead. Anybody that wants to stay sitting down, um, just to kind of, we're, we're just going to kind of move our bodies a little bit, get a Blair, little stretching in. You want to demonstrate um, how to do them sitting down? Yeah, like just sit in the chair and just in case anyone is watching virtually. And so you're just going to kind of mimic what we're doing while you're sitting. Yeah. Yep. So I, I always like to start from the top. Our, our, our neck, head, and shoulders, those, are a, a, those go a long way with when we walk. Having our upper body be loose as we're moving is really big in terms of keeping everything kind of working in concert. So we're just going to kind of start by dropping our right ear to our right shoulder. We're going to reach our fingertips down towards the ground so that we're kind of stretching our shoulders. We should feel this stretch in our left, on the left side. We're going to take a deep breath in and then breathe out. And then we're going to breathe in again. And on the way out, we're going to go over to the right side. Or I'm sorry, the left side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to reach our fingers down, left ear to left shoulder. Breathe in. 
Breathe out. In. And this time we're going to roll down. We're going to do one more on the right side. In. On the way out, we're going to roll back to the left. Breathe in. And then bring it back to the middle. Now kind of shake your shoulders out, kind of get things moving a little bit. We're going to do some arm circles. We're going to do small circles going forward. So we're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, and then back. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to do big circles going forward. One, two, three, four, five, and back. One, two, three, four, five. Good, and kind of shake that out again, get everything kind of moving. Now we're just going to kind of start moving in place a little bit. We're going to shift our weight back and forth, kind of start picking our knees up as we do it. Just kind of get things moving. It's always good to warm things up just a little bit before you stretch. We're not going to do any deep stretching. Actually, deep stretching before your exercise is really not that good for you. It's actually best to kind of do, do movement type exercises before you, stretch, before you work out and then deeper stretches afterwards. So then we're going to kind of take our legs wide out and, and do this in place. And then we're going to take our knees and we're going to bring our knees back. This one's a little harder. So if you're sitting down, you're going to want to bring, bring everything tight like you're doing like a knee crunch. There you go. That's, that's it. Okay. And then anybody that's standing up, I want you to kind of hold on to something because we're going to bring, bring our foot. Now, they, uh, stand this one being bilateral, this one you're going to sit out because we're going to do a little bit of ankle rotation. Our ankles really get overworked, with, especially when you're using one ankle for everything. So we're going to do some, some circles to the left and then come back and do some circles to the right. And then we're going to point our toe down and up. Down and up. And then one more time. And then good. So that should be, switch do everybody sides. feel like, well, I mean, yeah, switch sides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that everybody just picked their non-prosthetic side to do that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to get right into the exercises because we want to keep it moving for time's sake. Yep. So the next one, we're going to do the side steps. So right. ev does everybody have their, their Did tension Did everybody bands? get a TheraBand? Did everybody get a band? So what we're going to do with those TheraBands, <sighs> nope, here, you can do this one. You're okay. You got it. Oh, you want to do, here, I'll trade you. Which one is the toughest one, the blue? The black. Black's tougher than the blue? So what we're going to do here is, here, we're going to have our, kind of our volunteers help us with placement a little bit. And, and we're going to do this in baby groups of, of four or five at a time. So if we could kind of cycle through, there's just not enough room. There's lots of movement here for these ones. So there's not room in this, in the gym here for everybody to do it at once. But you can see Scott's going to demonstrate these. So the thing that's really important with this is where he's putting this exercise band. For anyone that's below the knee, you want to put it on the socket above the cut end of your tibia. Anyone that's above the knee, maybe just a little higher, Jay, just a little higher for her. Yep. You want to put it up on the socket in a place, what we don't want this to do is when you move your leg, for it to take your prosthesis oh. and move it on. We don't want to take that, have it move on your, on your limb and have it put pressure on the wrong spots. Lynn, you need help, some help tying the band? Oh, you can go in the next group. Lynn, why don't you, you can just yep. wait right there. We'll, so do you we'll want get you. Do you yep. demonstrate? So Scott's going to go ahead and demonstrate what we're doing here. So the idea is. These are called side steps. These are called side steps. And so you're going to step, depending whether you're leading with the prosthesis or the good foot, because you're going to go down one way and come back the other. So all muscle groups are going to get worked. But we want you to come out in a controlled manner. So we don't want you trying to go like this. Lift up the leg, then come out and down, almost like a one, two, three count. Yep. 
So now, when we lift up this leg, what I don't want to see is we don't want to lift up the leg and then just let it snap back. Okay, it's the same type of thing. It's a lift, lift, in, and down. So by going in a slow, controlled manner, we should be feeling those muscles work as we and, exercise. And again, Blair is going to demonstrate this, uh, the technique for doing these while, not, while you're not standing up. Yeah. So now, right. if I go down this way, but you see what's happening. So down, coming this way, my prosthetic side is lifting up, and I'm really balancing on my good foot. Now, this is going to be the hard part. So I'm going to lift up my leg, and I'm going to balance on the prosthetic side. But it's important we go both ways because I'm using different muscles with my prosthesis to do the first set of exercise. And we always teach it's equally important that we work the muscles on our sound limb as well, okay? So we up, in. Up, down, up, in, Actually, down. Actually, if anybody's interested, Ray is doing it here for a version um, without using a prosthesis. So for anybody that doesn't have, have a prosthesis, and then back, yeah, there you go, good. So Everyone what you feel do, those muscles working? So what you're going to do is you're going to stay right here, okay. and you're just going to take this one All out right. to the side, and then back in, and then this one out to the side, and back in. So let's switch and get a different group in yep. here. You got it. That's it, though. Good. Elena, you got Stan? Yeah. So what you don't want, the reason we don't want it below what we were talking about, you'll feel that on the end of your bone. If you have this around like where your calf is, yep, that's good. You will if you have too much pressure and resistance, though. You can't feel it because we teach you to do things the right way. Here, let's come forward. Come towards me. Just try to keep enough. You should have enough tension on the band at all times that it doesn't fall. You see what I mean? Well, you just got to keep your legs wider. So, let me do this. Follow me over here, Elena. Will you come to spot me? You're going to mirror me, okay? I just want to get... So, can you reposition those so they're up higher on where I had them? So stand with your feet so that they stay wide enough to keep tension on the bands, okay? So when you lift up and you come down, it's wider. But when you bring this one back, you still have to have it wide enough that the tension stays there. So your legs don't really get a break, okay? So we'll go together. Well, that's good. So up, over, and down. Come this way. There you go. They, now don't come in as far. There you go. Up, over. There you go. Good. Feel the difference? Your legs, go ahead. Okay. Well, those muscles will help you do it. Yep. I saw you doing your exercises in Eaton. <laughs> I'm like, you're being a hot dog back there. <laughs> I bet you were fun in school, too. Really? Well? Yeah. Yeah. Jeanette, yeah. Yep, I believe I see Jeanette right there, yeah. Okay, um, Brianna, Ray is demonstrating how to do the exercises without the prosthesis. She wanted to make sure that Jeanette might have been watching that if she had a question. Did we have more? What's that? Yeah, if you'd just say something. Jeanette, this is, uh, Ray is doing the demonstration of how to do the exercises without the prosthesis in case you were interested or anyone else who doesn't have who's above the knee that doesn't have a prosthesis that might want to try. Or even if you're below the knee, this would be kind of a similar no, technique for doing it in I a was, chair, well putting the, it up on your thighs like that. What you would do is like you that. would just lower it so it's down around your limb on the other side. Well, not, you said, not necessarily, would you? Wouldn't you want it just up here so you can just... I suppose. You'd still, yeah, you'd still, yeah, I think you'd still probably put it right there above your knee. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to move on to yep, monster rocks yep. after the... We sure do, but... Right. 
Yeah. That's a that, good that point. is a good point. Thanks, Brianna. Brianna just brought up the point that that this that all the exercises we're doing with the TheraBand today can be done without the resistance of the TheraBand. If, you're, if your balance isn't good enough or you're not strong enough to do that. So if you take these same exercises and you, the idea is you want to do them slow. Um, I never took Tai Chi, but I used it as a reference <laughs> earlier. But it, you, we're using our own weight as a form of resistance. So if I come up, you know, if I just go like this and I do it really fast, that's not going to be much of anything. But if I take and I actually transfer my weight over to my right leg, as I pick up, okay, and I'm doing this nice and slow, now I have to steady all my weight here and hold it and come over. So there's a lot of benefit in doing that. So now I'm going to switch my weight over to the prosthetic side again, come up. Now this is the hard part because you're balancing on the prosthesis. So the slower you go, the harder it's going to be. So you can do it without the TheraBands. Um, right, yep. <laughs> exactly, yep. exactly. So the next thing that Scott's going to demonstrate is monster walks. Again, this is something that can be done with or without the TheraBand. Another form of resistance. Um, standing or, or sitting. This is gonna be a, one that's gonna be a little harder to do without the prosthesis because there's kind of a circular motion. So, I was trying to, when I was working with Stanley there earlier, at, at any point when you bring the legs in, you gotta make sure that you don't bring them in too far when you're doing the side steps or the monster walk so that you lose tension and the leg falls. So you can tighten the band up some but the idea is if you're keeping that in a controlled manner. So with monster walks, you want to start out with one foot in front of the other. You really want to get low, so you're engaging all your muscles here. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in in a controlled manner and then out, okay? Keep that band in the right spot. You see what I'm doing here is I'm coming in and then out and forward. In, now, out and forward. I, I want to bring up now for, for our people that are above the knee, it, Landing on a bent knee is not necessarily a very good position, is it? That's not something that sounds that confident. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep, keep things here, and you're just going to make it a lot smaller. You're just going to make, make a circle and an arc on that side, and then on the other side, you can come around and, and you make You want to make sure that band is definitely above and the then, knee and on the side. And then come through and just make a circle and an arc. So, so with, your, with the side that has your knee, with your prosthetic side, you're not going to go in front of midline. You're only going to go to midline so you come for that. Like this. So that you can land, so that you can land on. Uh, the, if you lead with your other side first, it'll make a lot more sense. So if you start with your other leg, it'll make a lot more sense because then you'll say, oh, okay, my, my prosthesis is back here. I want to bring it back up to here. And then you can come back through with the other side again. Does that make sense? So, we just have a monster mode. <laughs> it, a, it, actually, it actually can have something that's... It's called animal. It actually, <laughs> it actually can have something where it, you can land on it with it bent, but we're just not there yet. Yeah. Well, you don't want to go side. You want to go forward. Nice job, Ben. Good. No, I understand. Yes. What I'm saying is you want to keep this here. So come here and then come forward more if you can. Yeah, I guess that's tougher. It's, it's a yeah, hard one. That's a, that's, a, that's a tough, tough yeah. one. Yep. No. That's awesome, Ben. Right. Yes. There you go. I'm, but you feel it, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Compensa so, a little compensation is okay in this. And the fact that she's above the knee doing it without that's, the band. That's what I'm saying. So, so Ray is going to demonstrate how to do the monster walks oh, without yeah. the TheraBand. Yeah. She's actually, and being above the knee, she doesn't have to worry about fighting the, although you were doing it pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, will you do it without, and then we'll have you do it with. Good. You're doing great. But do you feel that even though you don't have the band? Yes. That's the, that's the exact spot that you're supposed to be feeling it is all these muscles here kind of on the sides. So remember yep. before we talked about, everybody always talks about strength training, but when you feel the socket, is it the speed that those muscles are contracting in the socket? Yeah, yeah. So remember, it's been a couple sessions, but we there talked go, about Angie. what we're really trying to do is increase how quickly we can fire the muscles in the socket. Look at that. No, that was good. 
No, you're doing great. Yeah. And, and you got to think of the other people watching you that you're inspiring. Uh, I mean, that's... What's that? Yeah, that is good. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Raven. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I think she's going to interview... I think she has somebody right now that she's going to talk to, but then, yeah, if you want to yeah. go over there and just yeah, be sure. ready. Is there anybody else out that didn't get to try, the, try it that wants to try? Oh, Irvin's still working on it there. Good. Good. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So we're going to kind of move on to the next exercise. The, the next section of exercises is going to be very core-centric. Core so there's, it's going to be really focused on, on our core. Our core is a lot, has a lot to do with our stability, our control when we're walking. We think, oh, our legs are important to walk. Well, they are. But, but the, our control when we walk comes from right here. So, oh, I was going to show the chair. Oh, well, you're fan chairing me, dude. <laughs> I, did it. I did it on purpose. It gotcha. almost worked. So, so what, what's going to happen is we're going to put some mats up here just so that anybody that wants to do this on the ground is able to come up here. I'm going to demonstrate how to do the, how to do this, how to do the kind of exercises while you're sitting down. And anyone so, at home who's watching right. or if you leave here and you want to, here's the main thing. We're teaching the exercises that we're getting together doing once a month. What's really important is how much you incorporate this into your life when you get home. Because like any kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. Doing um, them once a month isn't going to get us where gonna we want. Isn't going to get it done. Right. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yep. And so the, all, the, all the exercise videos, these are all broken down online, uh, both at the website and at our YouTube channel. So if, if you want to see... You know, we go pretty fast through this stuff here, but we do a better job of kind of breaking things down. So if you want to see how to do these, or if you're like, I don't remember what are good exercises to do, that is a good resource, because it's all right there at those places. And we're still working on building the exercise library, the video database, so that'll keep expanding over time. Um, so so the, f the first thing that we're gonna do is, is called- Superman. It's called Superman. So Scott's going to demonstrate the Superman. I'm going to demonstrate what we call a Blair, a, a seated, so unassisted, ab, so ab, uh, isometric so ab workout. So what we're going to do, if anyone wants to try this on their own, when we go into the uh, position for the Superman where we say go, you have something, use my watch. When we get to 30 seconds, you say go, Blair, and then I'm going to go into position. Nate's going to demonstrate how to do it in the chair. And then when it gets to 10 seconds, she'll stay 10 seconds. So if you feel tired after 10 seconds, you can drop. If you go to 20 seconds, she'll stay 20 seconds. If you feel tired after 20, you can drop. Or you can try to go the whole 30 seconds, and at 30 seconds, she'll say, okay, end. So, so yep. what we're going to do, people that are sitting down, what we're going to do is we're going to put our feet flat on the ground here in front of us. We're going to get us so that our backs aren't supported. And we're going to fold our arms, and we're going to sit upright. We're going to try to keep our... Our, everything in a straight line here. And watch, 30 seconds wants, is, see becomes can make a little bit of something. We do have mats, Ben. <laughs> to what? Okay. Everybody take a little break. And then so Scott's going to now demonstrate bananas. So, well, I guess I think we got, oh. we can do another round. We got other people. Anyone well, else want to try it on the ground? Stanley, you good? Okay. Okay. okay, Blair, count us off. Say, okay, so say those go. of us that are sitting, we are going to follow Nate. Go here, and we're going to raise, if we can, if you're, Angie, go ahead and pick the one, pick it up as high as you can. There you go. That's it. And then put your arms up. Put your arms up in the air. You almost feel like you're flying, right, Ben? Oh, yeah. It's called kicking butt. <laughs> yep. When we get to 20, though, you're supposed to say 20 seconds. Okay. No, it goes... Now you're going to go into 30 seconds or 20? 
Yeah, but when yep. you so you go 10 <laughs> seconds, 20 seconds, then done. So now I wasn't paying attention to this. Everybody guy. on the floor, roll around. We're gonna do the next one. It's called bananas. So get your arm. You'll understand why in a second. Get your arms over so your head. We, those of us sitting down, we just did bananas, but we're gonna do we're gonna do the next thing. So that's gonna be putting one leg in the air. So, which is actually so a little harder. So when when Blair said you can't say till I show him the exercise. Oh. When she says go, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift your legs and your arms up like this, and you're gonna go bananas. <laughs> go bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. She'll go 30 seconds. So just say 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and done. Can you say 15 seconds too? Seriously. <laughs> okay, switch. Everybody sitting down that can switch, switch. So that's just you, Michelle. Everybody else hold. <laughs> nope. That's okay. You're nope. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> so now. The last one is called Good. planks, okay? <laughs> no, we're not going to assume anybody knows anything. So there's two different ways you can do these. So we're going to go back to our sitting like this. You can either go on your elbows and get up like this and just hold yourself in a plank position, okay? Or if you're more comfortable going like this, you can. I don't care if you do it on your elbows or up like this. It really okay. is the same. It's just but what feels more comfortable to yep. you. It's working the exact same muscles. So, but the idea yep. is you want to keep your butt down and engage your core so that you're, you know, if holding anybody your that that feels like this is too much on your lower back, you can always put your knees down too. If if if, yep. if going into the plank yeah, you feels do like, it like this. too much pressure on your lower back, I mean, you still get a benefit. No, not, from no, that. Stretch, stretch out. Now put your knees down. But, yep, that's it. Yep. <laughs> okay. So Blair's gonna say, go, and then she'll say ten seconds. 20 seconds and done. This one must be hard because finally nobody's talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going bananas. <laughs> I'm still going bananas over the last right. one. Good job. So if you like that, you know, you, another thing you could do is side planks. You can go like this then switch to the other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, the last, the last exercise we're going to do is kind of our balance weight shifting stuff. Um, everybody that comes knows that we kind of like to break our stuff down into three sections, strength, balance, and core. So we've done our strength, which was our side steps and our monster walks. We've done our, our core. Everybody's, everybody's still breathing a little hard from that. Um, now we do balance. Balance sounds easy, right? Nope, it's not. This is actually probably, we put this last because this is probably the most tiring part that we'll do. So, um, I know. So, no, I'm, I'm trying to think here, of it. Here, do you want to stand to the side up? You want to come up here and stand to the side? Sure. I'm just trying to think how everybody can see. So the people at home will show some other stuff in a little bit that'll be easier for you to do, but there's not really an adaptive way to do this one in particular. A lot, a lot of what we're going to do here is really based on weight shifting back and forth. We're just doing it kind of with micro movements where it doesn't look like that. So if you're at home, you don't have somebody with you, you don't have all that stuff, you can work on really shifting, trying to keep your center where it is, letting your hips shift over onto one side and then back onto the other. So we talk about finding your, your center. And that means if you shift weight over to this side like this, you want to try to keep your weight equal on the floor so you might have to take more to one hip or the other, but try using your hips to keep your feet on the floor and your balance and not your feet, so to speak, where you're pressing down one way or the other, but you're really using what's in here in the center area. And we're going to do demonstrate a couple of exercises which might help easily understand what we're trying to do with this. But this is an easier version of what those are. 
So this is something that, like again, like I said, this is going to look like it's very simple and easy, but it's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand here, and Scott's just going to kind of push into it a little bit, and I'm going to give him resistance. And then I'm going to move my hand here, and he's going to do the same thing. And so we're going to work in all these different directions. Now, the, the idea is I'm just touching his hand, and he's kind of, you don't see him moving a lot, but he's pushing into me, and I'm just kind of holding him in place. So Ray had mentioned earlier feeling the muscles contract in her socket. You're going to feel this more intensely, and the idea is where we talk about speed of the contracture. So what's happening is when his hand is there, I'm shifting my weight over to where his hand is, and I can stabilize myself there. But also to do that, that's where you're feeling the, if you're using your hips and all those muscles inside of that prosthetic socket. If you guys remember the first session where we did the heel, heel little toe, big toe, and identifying those muscle groups, and when we begin our first session in the fall, we're going to recap that and then kind of build directly off of that after right. we do a recap. So. so this is also something you can do sitting down. If, I, you're, if you're sitting down, it's really best if you can have a second ball that you can you, – it's well you, best to have – You need a, a second one. You, you can't really kind of want to have a second ball that you can squeeze. You want your feet flat on the ground and a second ball to squeeze. And then – So I will push, give him some resistance here. And it's the same effect because it really is your core and your hips. Right. It's harder with the legs, but you're working a lot of the same muscles, aren't you, Nate? And, yes. And, and if you're squeezing the ball, you're going to feel the muscles contracting in your socket, and that's the purpose of the ball. Um, so can you guys maybe start working with some of the people down here while we do the demonstration? All right, and so uh, what I want you guys to do is we're going to start, we're going to start kind of slow with this. We start by applying real slow pressure and slowly bring it to faster and faster. So right now, I might not have my center, and every time he touches me, I have to shift to find my center a little bit more. But as he does it, I stabilize a lot quicker. So if that starts to happen, this is where you speed up how quickly the, the shifts are. And then if you can continue to do that without me losing my balance, um, and if, they, if you start to lose your balance, just go at the slower speed. But always kind of be pushing to that threshold of where the speed is. So for the people watching at home, here, Scott, toss me that ball. Oh, sorry, I was gonna have, actually, hmm? Okay, squeeze that between your legs. We're just going to only do, do so many people. So arms now. out straight, straight, straight. There. What's that? Yeah, so, so when you're sitting, I want you to squeeze the ball between your legs. It's okay. That's all right. Because then it actually kind of helps you to drive through this. Nope, nope. Watch. So what's going to happen is I'm going to so push So if you're at home into me. and, and you don't have a partner, into me. one of the things you but, can but do what, for that you balance, can down here, like Nate was talking about, as soon as you squeeze the ball, you're from side to you can side, feel it. Now you're pushing from the ground You've got something thin or like a piece of foam or two pieces of foam you can put on there. Something that makes the ground softer. It just makes okay. it that much harder. It just work on from shifting nope. from You're right good. side You're to left good. side, forward to backwards, and using those hips. And yep. you should feel those muscles contracting in your prosthetic socket. So you can see so, as so you I don't want to push. You just want to the touch. softer the ground touch, is, the higher the level of the difficulty. Of what push. I'm trying she's to do is that's okay. That's all right. That's but that. Yep. So now, you can feel how much you're working, can't you, Ray? It's That's been hard. a while since I've trained for the triathlon yeah. or anything, but something I do do a lot when I'm doing that, oh, and I this know. really increases the level of difficulty. We're forward. not doing that yet, Blair. So you could take a BOSU ball like this, flip it upside down. So if the ground is soft enough, I don't really need anybody to push on those balls. But you see, you can really see the weight shift now. So when, if Nate was to do that with the ball, which actually we will demonstrate, so when I was telling you, you didn't see it when I was on the ground, all the hips shifting around, but you will when I do it like this. So if you do have a partner, you can do it with the ball. That'd be great. If not, you can get some dumbbells or some weights, work on just shifting your arms over to get, you know, that type of thing. Those are other adaptive techniques at home. I don't quite have my center yep, that's yet. Okay. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. You ready? Yep, go. So now you can see, if you look at his ankle, if you watch his ankles and hips, 
You can see how much work he's doing. Like I'm working my butt off. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Close. Not not far. Yep. Yep. So so that kind of wraps up our exercises. If everybody's had a chance to do that, does anybody, does anybody want a chance to do it a little bit more? Does everybody feel pretty good about it? Um, so, so we want to demonstrate a couple of ways yep. that we're going to build off yep. of this going into the next session. Oh, um, so what, Waleed, we're going to get, we'll get to you here. We're well, going to go do, through and we do... We can do his question real quick. Okay, that's We'll do great. it in between. Okay. Yeah, get cool. Waleed on Yeah, then. go ahead. Maybe ask him one more time if he's there. Waleed, are you still there? We oh, great. Hey. Uh, so he had a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. How are you doing? Hi, Hi Waleed. So, so Brianna said that you have a question for us. So Tora is, I've managed to get back into the gym and um, do swimming and weights and stuff but I don't really know how to train the right side of my body because it's above elbow amputation. I've, I've tried, um, you know, the things that girls use for, for the glutes where they're tight around their ankle. I've, I've tried strapping that, that on, um, on my arm and trying to do some like rows and chest flies with that. But I was wondering what else I could do. So that is, that's actually a great, that's a great place to start because that does strength and it kind of keeps range of motion in that shoulder. So you, those are the things you want to work on stretching and strengthening both. Um, what we can do while lead is we can get, we can get some demonstrations of exercises and stuff. And if, if you give Brianna your contact information, we'll send you some real specific stuff yeah. on, on things you can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll re I mean, what do you think of resistance bands for starters? Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of things that you're going to be able that we're going to that you're going to see that are kind of like finding a way to attach something to, you know, your residual limb, your arm that's there, and and doing things like flies. So doing things where you like like having the tension band that's anchored onto something, hold on to it. Um, like this might be a good adaptive, but but doing things like like this where you can lay down. And you can actually do this on both sides. Or you can have weight in one arm and you can have, have the tension band. This, this right here works. Yeah. The, the or works if this. you want to do your shoulders. Yep, like or if you want to do the shoulder, you can do You up. can come up. So, so tension bands are, are a really good way of, of kind of introducing things because you'll be able to kind of position them on your arm um, and, and still get that full range of motion. So and, fine, yeah. and tension bands are really good because they get harder as you get to the end range of motion. So the farther you go, the harder it is to do the exercise. Mm -hmm. So just think of all the directions you can move it. If you can find an right. anchor point, there's going to be a benefit to that movement. That's, that, that's a, that's, that is a great place to start. And we can still send you some more specific things too. Mm -hmm. Adaptations and things. <laughs> he sets what he starts. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. Yep, good. Um, so, so thank you for that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to demonstrate just kind of give a little sneak peek, a little advance of what's going to be coming when we come back in the fall. Some of the things that obviously we like to keep building. We like to get this more and more advanced as we go. When we come back in September, we're going to start simple and basic because that's where we start. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping that by the end, you know, we have some people that are really ready to uh, kind of do some more things. So, what so, we're, so some things we're going to work on is, is a lot of tension band and core weight shifting type things. So the reason I like to demonstrate on the BOSU ball, because when I stand on flat ground, you can't really see what my hips are doing or what I'm doing. But when I am fighting for my weight here, you know, everybody sees me shifting and they either are laughing at me or you're thinking I'm showing off. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but really what he's doing, so a lot of this, this will be done on the ground. Right. But he's just kind of showing so that everybody can see what's happening. I'll demonstrate on ground, but you won't see. But when I'm doing it like this, you can tell that I'm really fighting for my balance. So if you were to take the tension band and we were to do something like this, okay, and you just come over here, I have to really, you know, focus all my weight using my hips to go back over to the prosthetic side. So there's a lot going on here when I do that. And when I come back, you see we're doing the same thing as well. So, um, so... So now, you can see, again, he's slow and controlled. 
Yeah. He's making the motion at his hips, not down at the floor. He's now, not, his knees aren't moving. His knees are solid. Right. Now, he, I'm going to do it on the ground, which is what I was doing at the gym. I wasn't using the tension band. I was doing something else. But like I said, the demons. But if you see me do it like this, you don't really see the struggle. I can feel it. I know what my muscles are doing. So when we have you do that, so the demo. But a nice thing with the Bosa ball, too, so you kind of plant a seed. It's like, okay, so if this gets to be easier, what can I do to challenge myself? And then we can move by incorporating more foam pads into there, um, you know, or, or, you know, graduating it up. And, uh, and we'll do the resistance walking. Yep. yep. So another thing, well, we'll do the, the anchor point first, yep, yep, I guess. Yep. So another thing that we'll do is resistance Go walking. Ahead, and a lot of times some people talk about where they might want to learn to run. This is a great starting point, but this is a great start. This is a great workout for walking as well. So, Nate's walking up hills. This is also good for the position for walking up hills because we're always using. The, we have to really use those extensors to do this. So the first exercise we're going to do, Nate's going to act like if I was on my own. We're using the resistance band as an anchor point. So I'm just going to step through here, and remember the pull throughs with the prosthetic side. Remember those exercises. So now when I go to do a pull through, there's really no cheating. I mean, I have to have good, you're, it's all extensors at that point. So we come back, step forward, pull, and we're really working those. I mean, that's all extensors right here that we have to make that work. So this is a great exercise. I love this. Like always, we work the sound limb too, just because it's what you do when you work out, right? And, and we no want it to stay good. We want well, it to I mean, be good and strong for you. It's important. You know, a lot, we talk a lot about amputees and all the other stuff too, but we advocate lifestyle change. I mean, the healthier we are, there's no such thing as too healthy, right? We're not getting younger. We're, you know, and it's like quality of life as we get older. Um, I find myself, some, you know, I'll train for these triathlons with Nate, get back into shape and be like, wow, I felt better than I did when I was, you know, 40, which is kind of a lie, but. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you feel good. So you work, if you're already there, work both sides. And it's important too, a lot of times, we don't talk about this a lot, you might feel something because you're doing something with your sound limb and you feel what's going on with your foot and then you get a muscle response that when you go back and do it on the prosthetic side, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Because yeah. remember we talked about identifying the muscle groups in the socket, why does that work? We're using the muscles that our body was designed to walk with originally anyway. So when we do something right, our triggers our, our mind to say, that's natural. That's why I recognize that. Sometimes doing a sound limb exercise, you know, you do it like that, and then you go to the other side, and you're like, wait a minute. That's what Scott and Nate were talking about when they were talking about these muscles, and I identify it, and I felt it in the socket. Because once you identify the muscle groups, um, the rest, it, it get, becomes so much easier because then you can turn it on and off. So, and lastly, we'll show the um, yep. resistance walking. So just getting someone who can follow behind, and the more I go, the more tension we have. It's like I'm water skiing. And I, <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can just drag them right. around, you know, like tubing when you try to throw the kids. But so, th so the thing that's really fun about this, this exercise. So show like for running. Like yep. Well, what I was just going to say is that, you know, we've done this one and demonstrated this a lot in our, in our clinics over the years at the step ups. And, and by the end of it, by the end of doing this, we have lots and lots of people running that never thought that they would be able to run. I mean, we, we, I mean, it's happened time and time again where people are like, no, I'm not a runner. I would never be able to do it. We go through these exercises. We demonstrate all this stuff. And next thing you know, there's a hallway and there, there goes somebody with a prosthesis running down the hall. Because on a prosthetic foot, you're not running heel to toe like that. I mean, you shouldn't be when you regularly run anyway, but it's more midfoot. When you really more, you have to go toe to toe. So you change the position of your body where you're more forward on the prosthesis, okay? <laughs> And, you know, we all, most of us probably have the carbon fiber feet where we feel that load in that spring. So what this enables me to do, which would be scary to do for the first time by yourself, but while Nate's behind me, I can kind of put myself in a position where my weight's forward and look at what I'm doing. I mean, that's essentially running. You know, running is having one foot off the ground while the other, you know, while you only have one ground hitting, one foot hitting the ground at a time. And if you can get somebody to where they're comfortable doing that all of a sudden, and then you may, hey, it's not about speed, but like for the first time you're doing that, it's, it's, it's exciting, it's eye-opening, and like I said, we've gotten a lot of people to run for the first time, and, right. it's, and it starts here. And does anybody have any questions? I mean, we should probably follow yeah. up and find out if anybody has any, any more questions. Did you guys address Jennifer's question about um, how to get into a boat? Oh, yeah. So she has her hand oh, yeah. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Can I ask you a question real quick? Actually, a yes, couple. Please, yes, please. Yes, please. Just 
I know we're out of time, but um, the first thing I wanted to ask Scott was, do you run with like your regular feet, like your regular feet that you get with your prosthesis? I do have a special running leg. I can run on it. I don't like it. I'm spoiled now that I own a prosthetics company. <laughs> <laughs> but because when I work for other people, I just had insurances that allowed me to buy one leg. Um, and I have better insurance now, but they still don't pay for athletic legs. That's another story. Um, it can be done. Uh, there are different feet, though, that are certainly better for running and walking right. every day. Right. We just had a conversation in the Lansing office yesterday about, and this is where we get into, and you'll always hear us talk about advocacy, but we get in with the insurance companies where they just simply, people do not understand a foot that's going to work great to run with is going to be provide more resistance and be bad for you in regular. These are two different activities. You can't, there's no such thing as one leg that's going to do both of those activities. Right. Not in an properly. optimum basis. No, I mean, yeah. Not in an optimal basis. Like Scott said, I've seen him, I've seen him run with, with this prosthesis. I don't like to see him run with this prosthesis. Well, I've been in other events where, you know, you see somebody cross the finish line and, and you notice, well, they have a prosthesis on and it's just, it's a regular everyday leg. So people do it. Um, you know, it, 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 puts a, it puts a lot of the wrong impact on your body. That's what it is. We, what is it's the wear and tear. I mean, one of the things we're trying to add, get insurance companies to understand, the wear and tear on the rest of our bodies, that's going to cost them more money in the long run. And right. if you have individuals, they say, oh, well, that's athletic. Hey, guess what? People who are healthy aren't going to the hospital as much. Mm -hmm. Hello. Right. <laughs> so, I right. mean, there are, it's a slow road and we got to get more people underway, but... Um, Running is one of the best things that you can do, you know, to keep your body healthy. I just have the regular leg with, uh -huh. you know, the regular foot, foot shell or whatever. I think it's a K3. I don't know what all that means, but I just know that that's what they tell me. Okay, mm -hmm. so I run since I've had this, but I walk every day. And the foot shell on this foot keeps getting holes in it. Like this is the second one that I've had and I've got holes on the bottom of it. Is that preventable? I mean, what do I need to do? Not, to keep not, not, not really. J I, just keep getting it replaced. The more active you are, the more you're going to get holes and things like that. And that's, I mean, that, those are the problems we like to have in our office. Right. Because people whose legs are sitting in the closet, they never get holes in their feet. You know, well, I mean, their foot shells. My um, prosthetist, when I asked him about that and replacing it, he just tried to fix it instead of replace it. And now I've got another hole. Actually, I've got two more holes and the, the top up here is slit. So now I think he's finally going to order me another one, but he keeps saying it's the way I'm walking. It's the way I'm walking. But I didn't think well, that it, here, here's the thing. It, it is, it is the way that you're walking. I'm sure he's, he's off, ultimately he's right, but there's gotta be two questions that you ask. Are you walking wrong? Is, so this, this, I'm not asking you the question. These are the questions you have to ask him. Am I, if, if the way I'm walking is causing this, am I walking wrong? So, it, so I mean, if, if you are walking wrong, what can you do differently to do this? If you're not walking wrong, then why is it a problem? I, I look at, like Scott was saying, I look at it when somebody rips a foot shell, like that, that is how you're walking. It means you're walking a lot. Great. Go out there and get it. Keep doing those things. We, we can re, we can buy new pieces of Did rubber. You guys get everything you need. That's easy. Okay. No, those that's those no, are, those that's are the easy sweet. things. So so you, think, so you just got to ask him if if they're saying it's because you're let, doing something. You'll let us know. Doing something. Ready. Ask him if, if it means you're doing something wrong and how to correct that. Anything like that. I know we have a lot of. That that, that would be so. the question that I have. That's that's all. I was just curious about that. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. And I, Thank you. A Ashley has a question. Yes, actually, um, you're talking about different types of feet or whatever or for the running, and I understand that. But what about skydiving? Before I had my amputation, we were always um, going hiking, um, biking, things of that nature. We're real big bike riders. But what about skydiving? That was also something that I was okay. really big into prior to my amputation and I want to skydive again. I'm, I've right. got the itch for it, but 
So, I'm so skydiving, skydiving is going to come down like, more to the suspension, like how the prosthesis how is attached to your body, you than the actual Anakin, foot so that you we'll use. Hey, I mean, I've only I've only jumped out of a plane once. That okay. was enough for me. Um, well, I you, but but I mean, okay, if you perfect. think about it, there is only one impact of the ground, right? There's only one point where during that 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 your body actually goes from not being on the ground to being on the ground. So the foot that you have is not necessarily all that important for that. It, what the thing that you're going to want to really know is, is this prosthesis securely attached to my body? I can't imagine that that'd be a, that's not something that you'd really want to be thinking on on roller Talking coasters skydiving or skydiving yeah. or, <laughs> or, or things like that nature. So I, I, I know lots of people that have, that have done it um, and done it, done it successfully. Um, most of the ways that we hold the prosthesis on or use to hold the prosthesis on are adequate for skydiving. You may want to, you know, if, if you use one method, maybe you want to add a suspension sleeve to add secondary suspension, yes, you do. things like that. Well, <laughs> absolutely you it. do. I'm being a little political, yeah. but yeah. But you, I mean, you want to do whatever you can do to, you know, secure the prosthesis to your body. I mean, honestly, where, I mean, I have a lot of people that use their prosthesis in water, which water can also kind of remove rivers and things like that can remove a prosthesis. Mm -hmm. They like to wear like tight fitting pants. So water skiing. I was going to say, wear he's like, being, wearing he's like being political. I'm a guy who lost my leg at the bottom of right. lake water skiing. <laughs> so, so, you know, <laughs> That's why I'm going, yes, you need wear, Wearing like almost like wet, you know, wearing everything to secure yeah, it and real. then wearing like wetsuit type material or things like that mm -hmm. over top of it. So that anything you can do to secure it, then you're, then you'll be in that, then that's, that's your biggest limitation with that. For years, I used to work to a doctor in Midland and I'd go in to do a post-op consultation. I know you, you're the guy who lost his leg in Sanford Lake. Dr. Sheffick <laughs> told me all about you. And they wanted to talk about me and my leg going to the bottom of the lake <laughs> instead of them losing a leg. But, <laughs> and then the DNR showed up because they were watching us and we wanted to actually get them to use their depth finder to see if they found anything. And the guy, he, I, he said, what happened? I said, I was water skiing and my leg came up, you know, and my leg fell off. And he says, has that ever happened before? And I said, well, just one other time, but I was on a motorcycle and it hurt a lot more. <laughs> and he looked at me like, you are one sick puppy. <laughs> he didn't quite know how to react, but I love making able-bodied people feel uncomfortable. At the, yeah. If you don't have a sense of humor, how do you get by? But yeah, but I thought it just flew right out of my mouth. I was like, only one other time and I was on a motorcycle. With the engine off. No. With the engine <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jennifer, they, Brianna just said that your original question was how do you get in and out of a boat? Um, Scott, Scott mentioned that you do it with the motor off. That's number one. Um, but he was just kind of joking. He, he was joking. Yeah, I was joking. Um, we got lots of people that get on, hey, you get know, in and out of boats every, that do that avidly. Scott's an avid boater. Yeah, I mean, right. uh, you know, if you got a swim platform, every boat doesn't, ladders. That's one of those situations where you really, you want to get with some people that you're comfortable with and just practice. I mean, if you can get in, if you have a suspension system that's going to be adequate to hold your leg on, you should be able to manage it. Um, but it's going to be difficult the first couple times and you might, you know, you just, you'll have to find a way to adapt. So have a group of people with you. Okay. The metal part of your leg, do you get, do you get a new one with, whenever they replace the socket, because I only have one. So it, that, that just, so it, that, that just depends on, on your provider. Um, but if, if you need some extra lengths of, of metal part, we have lots and lots of them. Yeah, we, can send, we can send you some, some pylon. Yeah, if that's an with issue the, with the foot. That's, as long as they're that, willing to cut it to the right length yep, and stuff, we yep, can take care we, of that. We can send, we've got lots of scrap. A lot of donated yep. parts that people give to us. Well, every time we use that, I mean, we, we cut those to length whenever we make a new one. And we always different. buy them at a set length. Sometimes we use the whole length. Sometimes we only use this much. So we have lots and lots of all the extra pieces. So we can send you, we can send that with your foot. That's, that's fine. And we have other donated parts. We can send you everything that you need to, to hook that, we'll the just, foot to the socket. Do we want to just throw some tube clamps? And yep. Some that's stuff. What, we'll you send know what? You we haven't shipped your thing out yet. We'll put some adjustable components in there. So Stanley had mentioned earlier, Brianna, can we get Stanley the microphone? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, Ray has it. I'm sorry. Ray, did you um, want to say something? I just wanted to let her know that, um, 
I've been encouraged by different people about having a swimmer's leg. Um, I've been doing, uh, been in the water ever since. I never let it stop me. So when I didn't feel safe using my prosthetic leg for falling in the water and losing my leg like Scott had, um, I just take my leg off and scoot across the ground, use a walker, whatever means. I just don't let nothing stop me. So I just want you to be encouraged that even though you, if you don't feel safe, just do what you feel safe until you can get what you do to feel safe. So Stanley had mentioned at the beginning that he had just gotten back from a kayaking clinic, and I knew that he was going to do that before he left, and he is interested or working on some things where he wants to do some adaptive kayak clinics for amputees or all yes. disabilities. Amputees, uh, anybody. Uh, so I'm going to turn the floor over to you, Stanley, to talk about. I uh, met these guys through the Wounded Warrior Project over in uh, Eaton Rapids, uh, they're both certified sea kayak instructors. They're also adaptive instructors. Uh, they even work with sight impaired kayakers, which I can't imagine how I would have the guts to get out there on water and not be able to see what I was doing. But they have, uh, they do clinics. They have equipment. They have boats. Uh, they have stabilizers, which is what I use. Kayaks kind of can be a little rocky, so you put a like an outrigger, like you see on the Hawaiian. Well, they have an outrigger that goes on either side. You can't turn it over. Uh, it's very relaxing. As I said, it's low impact. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there doing it. And and I you highly recommend it. Like if she was saying, you know, I, the biggest challenge is getting in and out. Uh, According to the instructor, the biggest challenge for anybody is getting out. I watched one of them fall in his rear end yesterday trying to come out of a, a muddy bank, and mm -hmm. he's been instructing for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but with these, uh, being able to get in the water has made a big difference. It really has. Uh, somebody asked me, I want to get a paddle, uh, a pedal kayak. That's one that they now have that you use your feet to move the kayak with either a propeller or a couple of fins. Uh, so there's a lot of things. I'm going to go get one of those because I'm too uncoordinated. I want to go fishing. And I can't paddle and fish at the same time, folks. I'm going to have to be doing <laughs> something with my feet and then something with my hands because I'm going to have stuff all over the place. But uh, anybody that's interested, they will come do clinics. They will make themselves available. They will bring the equipment. Uh, and they're just great guys, wonderful people to work with. So, so if anybody wants to network with them, I've got their contact information. Well, is anyone here, would they be interested in kayaking? Is that? Yeah. As someone said, yeah. there's, a, there's a kayak livery here. So I'm sure we can work so with them to get something here and not have to go anywhere to do it. So Stanley was, wants to put a clinic together where we have one kind of around us, right? So what, I guess what I'm going to say is we have our Facebook community and things like that. I know other people who come to our office like the kayak. So um, if we have things available and he's going to use his resources to help put something together, we will keep everybody informed. And we, I wanted to mention that today because we hope that before the end of this summer and before we reconvene, uh, we have a clinic. Um, and, you know, a lot of times that leads to if we have one in July, we might have another one in August just because people like to do it. So it's just outsourcing, finding ways to get people to do things that they maybe haven't done before or they used to do and they want to get back to doing it again. Uh, I, I've, I've always been an outdoors person and these last four years, not being out in nature at all has made a big difference. Uh, I can't, can't tell you how it felt to be out there going down a river a couple of days ago. Uh, my gosh, I haven't done that in, in a long time. Yeah. And it, uh, mm -hmm. as y'all say, as y'all all know, mm -hmm. mental health is extremely important when we're going through all of this. Yep. And just the, just the freeness of being able to pilot your own boat and, and not have, I've had all kinds of boats, row boats, motor boats, fishing boats. These kayaks are so much fun. They're, they're really easy to work with and easy to learn. Uh, and again, very low impact on, on your body. I mean, I've got a bad back, I've got a bad shoulder, I've got a bad 
well, I don't have the bad feet anymore. They're gone. <laughs> but, uh, pardon? That's it. It's you. That's all you can do. Uh, people ask if you're, aren't you afraid to fall in? Or, well, yeah, but my feet aren't going to get wet. And <laughs> they aren't won't you get afraid to either. get out? And, well, no, I can crawl out. I watched a mm-hmm. guy do that yesterday that knows what he's doing. So, you know, uh, you got to have a sense of humor, though. Right. Well, I was going to ask him, does he do it with his, his uh, prosthesis? Yes, I did. Ah. Uh, I, I haven't tried it with it off yet. They're, they won't let me get it. There's two types of kayaks. There's a sit-in where you are just got a little hole here and a sit-on. Uh, I use a sit-on because if I were to turn over, I couldn't get out of a ca- regular kayak. I would be stuck. Uh, I'm talking to them about maybe going to a closed kayak and taking my prosthetics off, because I'm going to talk to these guys, and then make me two sleeves for my legs that have a little fin down on the bottom, because I'm going scuba diving. <laughs> oh, we scuba dive. We scuba dive. Scuba is certified. We do that. Yeah, yep. you know, I mean, we, uh, this is perfect. I, we got gotcha. you. I can strap we gotcha. a, a swim yep. fin to the, to the end of these things. Yeah, Abby and I, Abby and I took scuba lessons. We go, we have, we have an, um, another guy. He, was, he got caught up at work today. He wasn't able to be here. Scott. He wears bilateral below the knee prostheses. He scuba dives with us. Oh, it's Come on, we love it. Yeah. We love it. Oh, I was just going to say that I kayak all the time and I take my leg off because it's more comfortable that way. I have a sit in. So Robin just said that she, she, does, she has a sit inside kayak and she said she takes her prosthesis off when she kayaks because it's more comfortable. I have another patient who's an above the knee that he also take, he also takes his prosthesis off when he sits in his kayak. Um, I use uh, because of the pedals. I yes, I yep. get a whole lot more with my right. feet. And my concern is if I were to get in one and take both my prosthetics off, my center of gravity is going to be way up on top of that kayak, not down like it needs to be. Right. So that's that's right. the reason I'm stayed with what I'm getting right, right now. There's lots of different options, right? So it's, oh, yeah. fi- it's finding what's most comfortable for you. There's if lots you, of solutions to, to the same th- uh, problems. If you want to do it, you can do it. You can figure it out. Yep. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. Yep. We'll talk to the Marines. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, does anybody else have any questions for us before we sign off here? Well, that concludes... Not only this session of Step Up, but our spring session and uh, spring session 2022 back from the pandemic. Right. Which is a big deal. So a a real big deal. So we appreciate everybody coming. I mean, we love seeing all the familiar faces. We love the new faces. Um, We love seeing everybody from all around, you know, not just even in our community, but growing our community outside of of mid-Michigan. So this is fantastic. So we really appreciate meeting everyone and... We look forward to seeing you guys all back in Sydney. September. So things will be posted. You'll see plenty of activity. I mean, we're going to still be posting things over the summer. Um, but uh, anyway. Uh, I didn't know if you wanted to just meet Rebecca and Sydney real quick, too. They hopped on. You don't have to, but. Well, so Rebecca and Sydney, we'd like to thank you guys for coming. We didn't get a chance to kind of to meet you guys during the, the intro. Um, do, do either of you want to hop on real quick and. Say, say hello to everybody. Well, hello. How are you? This is Sydney. Um, for some reason, I'm on a different profile of mine that I would prefer to be on. I would prefer the little blue bird not to be up there, so I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm we trying like to get it. under my name. Well, I, I go on the Sydney Amthibus, and that's a whole different part of, of what I do. I'm, I'm an artist, so I trying to figure out how to switch them so I don't have my little blue bird up there. <laughs> but I, I tell you what I'm interested in. I jumped in late because I was at work and I tried to come in earlier, but I was unable to. What I would like to know is if you can send me a schedule, um, some type of events. I want to get involved in events. I want to get involved in a sense where maybe perhaps I can sponsor, come out there, um, kind of share a little bit of why I'm in this world because of what happened to my mom becoming a, um, an amputee two years ago. So that's kind of my goal is I, I want to know how I can help. So maybe my angle is a little different. I'm not too sure because I miss pretty okay. much 
all of the meeting. I'm so sorry well, about no, that. that. That that's that's great, and I mean, obviously, what we're trying to do is is build networks of resources. So, you know, a, after the meeting, if you want to go ahead and uh, send your information to Brianna, we'll make sure that we get back around to you, and we'll we'll see how. Oh, I mean, perfect. we 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 need everybody that we can get involved for advocacy because there's just not enough people out there that understand prosthetics, understand the, the challenges and all those things. So, absolutely, send us send us your information, and we'd be happy to kind of interface back with you. Thank you. And I just became um, uh, part of the, I just got my certificate from the uh, amputee coalition. So it's definitely something that's been a passion of mine for the last two years. And I just want to keep going with it. And, uh, you know, like anybody else, just do a part. But I appreciate that. I Very will good. contact Brianna for sure. Okay, fantastic. Right. Well, we look forward to working with you in the, in the yeah. future. Thanks. Thank, thank you, everyone. Okay, well, I think that kind of wraps things up. We really appreciate everybody's time. And uh, we hope everyone has a, a great summer um, for anybody that we don't see. And if, if not, we'll, we'll make sure that we have Stanley's kayaking information out and anything else that comes up. Yeah, don't be strangers, please. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks again. Appreciate having you all here. All right.